Relax. It's ASMR. Hello, everyone. I have a unboxing, unpackaging video to do for you today. I bought this package to create a makeup video, which I haven't done in a long time. I think I've only done one makeup video, and it was really popular. I talked about it in kind of my retrospective video. And I decided that I wanted to do another one because I really enjoyed it and you guys have really enjoyed it. But I no longer have the old makeup from like the 90s that I was using for my first video. So I went and bought a box of makeup. I'm very much out of my element, but I now have this in front of me. So I figured that I would at least unbox it take a look at what is inside, get some feedback from you guys as far as what you would like to see, maybe some advice on usage. Although part of the fun of doing the video is not understanding. But I watched a lot of makeup videos since then in my ASMR experiences. I like ASMR makeup videos. I watch them for the ASMR. I've tried to watch like regular makeup tutorials. It's, it's okay, but it, I don't get ASMR from them as much. Anyway, that being said, I have a box of makeup here in front of me. And when you have something in a box and you have a video camera, doing an unboxing is just required. So let's get into this and pull it apart, see what's in it. If you have any comments or any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to read those and see what you think. I don't know anything about the quality of this makeup. This is not a review of endorsement or saying this is good. This is a package of makeup that seemed to be fairly comprehensive that I could buy and use for a video. So. Let's get into it. It comes on these trays that line the outside walls and the top of the box. So it is not jammed, fact, packed full of makeup. It is displaying everything that you can get in this package through the clear walls. So there is a big silver cardboard thing filling up the central void. So the first is this tray here. It contains a sandpaper board for filing down your nails. It's like it's a nail file. This, I think, these are used to separate your toes for when you're painting your nails. And then here's nail polish. And then we have some sticks, and we have another thing here. So these seem to be all kind of related to each other for painting nails. And we'll get into each one specifically later on. This mirrored surface is freaking out my camera. It's like it goes really dark when I move away my hands if they want to interrupt it. So I'm getting a lot of bounce back from that, but that's okay. So these three sides seem to be one long piece that is just hinged here. So I'm going to try to pull it out very gently and hopefully not make a whole lot of terrible scraping sounds. There we go. And then pulled out the cardboard box as well. Good. And then there's some just desiccant packages here in the bottom. So let me move this box out of the way. It's just a plastic box. It's of some use. It looks like it would hold up to holding the makeup. But I don't know how it would hold up to be an actual travel case that would carry under heavy use 
the makeup. So it's functional, but not highly functional. It did a good job of transporting it and shipping. Okay, so now we have a mirrored cardboard box, which is kind of cool. I think it would be an awesome use for a birthday present or a Christmas present or something like that. You can see my face. Hello, how are you? <laughs> and it's a very, I bet this would be really good to do um, specular highlights and stuff for a 3D. Well, usually they use spheres, I think, for that. But I can find a use for that for sure. I think I can put some presents in it. That would be awesome. Okay, so now we have, let's move this top tray over here. And we'll move this front and center. Okay. Well, it looks like these actually have some nice labels on them. This says blusher, 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 bronzer. Get some of the highlights and all of that. Mirror box, lip gloss. There we go. Lip gloss, lip gloss, eyeshadow, 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 eyeshadow. So these four are eyeshadows. This says shimmer, shimmer powder. These three are shimmer powder. Here is an eye pencil. Let's move this over a little bit more. These are more eye pencils in different colors. And I even recognize what these are. These are lipsticks. And we have another mirror. And then we have some pencil sharpeners. So this says nail varnish on these and then these don't have labels that I can see. So from that aspect, that is really cool. This was advertised as kind of a beginner's kit for people who wanted to learn how to do makeup. So I'm finding it very helpful to know the actual terminology printed on the different pieces. I like that. I feel a little bit more educated. I don't necessarily know how to use them, but at least tells me this says eye, this says lip, this says lip, this says eye. So you can start to get the lay of the land, as it were. So let's go over each one of these pieces. We'll start here on this end. We have a mirror. It's just in a plastic black case with a mirror on the front. We'll save that to the side. Obviously, it's to help you see your face. Very important. You don't want to put on makeup in the dark. You will start to scare people. I at least know that. So the next thing here is a pencil sharpener. We have two different sizes, a large opening and a smaller opening. And obviously this is to sharpen the pencils that come with the kit. Although it looks like they would all just use the smaller opening. Let's see. We'll move on to the pencils next. So this is a like a milk chocolate color. It says, I pencil Shani Enterprises, Houston, Texas, made in China. So, yeah, 
the large opening is way too big. So I think this is just a standard pencil sharpener that they get by in bulk. It does fit the smaller pencil, and it goes in at an angle so that it is trimming off correctly the wood. I would imagine, yeah, this is uh, pretty soft. It's very easy to make a line. It feels almost like a really stiff putty. So I can imagine that you would have to clean this pencil sharpener off quite a bit as you were accumulating and scraping off this putty as you were sharpening. So it sounds slightly messy, but not too bad. But um, yeah, if you want to put some chocolate color on your eyes, that is a good way to do it. So we have milk chocolate. We have this like blush rose color. It's kind of a dusty rose. Well, it's dusty here on this printed pencil, but the actual, let's see. Yeah, it's a little lighter of a dusty rose actually on my fingertip here. It rubs off pretty well. I mean, I guess that's not a good thing, is it? I don't know. And they have nice little caps to protect the soft ends of the pencils. That's nice. Oops. And then this looks like a redder color. It's much more of maybe a brick red. It seems to have some sort of glimmer or shimmer. I don't know if you can see that. These are pretty small little objects we're working with here, but it has some sort of a shimmer to it. And this comes across as, yeah, that's a little more crumbly than the other. Yep, there is a definite iridescence to that. So, that's cool. That seems to stain a little bit more, too. And then we have the black, which is very easy to mark with. Which I guess is what you would want because your eyeball is so delicate in your eyelids and everything. You're not you don't want to have to like really scrub to get the color off. You want to be able to just barely lightly touch your eyeball and have color be transferred to it. So I can see that. But I don't know the difference between an eye pencil and an eyeshadow. So I assume you use these fairly sparingly because there's not much of them. With it, that lead being as soft it is, as it is, if you were trying to cover your whole eyelid with this, you'd use it up really quickly. So I guess you're just drawing lines around your eye with it, which is why you would need it to be sharp and keep it sharp because you're basically drawing thin lines. That's what I'm surmising based on what I have seen. So everything in this seems to complement pretty well. We have mostly kind of reds and golds, I mean reds and roses and some browns. We do have some cooler shades here, but everything seems to be pretty warm on the color spectrum. And I assume that's because most people look better in warms than cools. I don't know. Squeaky squeak. So the next thing we have are three 
upstairs. Again, we have a kind of light pink color, kind of a dusty rose, not really rose pink, but kind of, because this is more of a rose. Well, I don't know. They're pretty close. Those colors are pretty near identical. This is a little redder than this. So, definitely pink. With a hint of rose in it, we'll say that. This is a deep red. I really kind of like that color. It's not quite burgundy. Although it definitely is leaning towards burgundy, but it is a little brighter than burgundy. It's kind of in between a true red and a dark red. See, there's a little seam where these were put together. Or maybe it's just molded that way. It's a seam in the mold. It has a nice bevel to it. I'm not getting much of a smell off of any of this, so I guess that's good. It's not heavily perfumed. And then this is much more of a pink, kind of a medium pink color. So we have light, medium, and dark. Although the differences between these two Are pretty subtle. I mean, they definitely are different, but we're leaning towards the darker end of the spectrum. This is a pretty significant jump in lightness, so there's a bigger difference between these two than these two. So this is just kind of a medium pink color. And make sure we don't destroy these. We need to use them for the next video. I want to shoot with these. Okay, this just says lipstick on the bottom. I, it just says made in China and then it gives the weight and stuff. It doesn't have like a name for the colors that I can see. No, it just says it's distributed by and where it's made. So there are the lipsticks and we have finished the first section of our tray. Now these are thick plastic little cups. that say shimmer powder on a sticker that's put on there and then a sticker on the back as well. The lid is ridiculously huge, but I guess that's easy to grab. Ah, no, I'm sorry. That's weird. This is the bottom. This is the top. Does that make sense? Is that normal? I'm not sure. You would think this would be where the nice label was, not there. Okay, that makes more sense. I was wondering why you would have such a huge lid. It seems like you would be dumping powder out a lot. I don't know. If there is a reason why you think that is, let me know. I'd be interested to see. So there's a plastic cap that is keeping the powder 
in. Let's see if I can take one of these off. There we go. It just fits there. I can tap it and kind of make it move. So it's a loose powder. The desiccant is doing its job and keeping it dry. It is very light. You can see some of it here got on my finger. It has an iridescent quality to it. And this is a light gold, kind of an opulent color. This, this is a shimmering pearl color otherwise known as just kind of white or very light gray, but because it has a shimmer to it, I think pearl is a good name. I don't want to drop this. It'll be all over. This is like worse than glitter. But that's kind of the function that it has, I assume, is to give the eyes a glitter-like appearance. And then we have this lilac light purple color. So, more eye stuff. Still don't understand the upside down jar configuration. That's bizarre to me. Okay, we're going to put these over here with the other eye stuff. Just like that. Okay. Lots of eye things. Eyes are important. They are the first thing we see when we look at someone's face. They are one of the more expressive areas of the body for emotion. That in the mouth. The nose doesn't get much action when it comes to emotional expression. Okay, so these are eye shadow, and these are eye... Well, this is just shimmer powder, actually. I'm assuming that it's eye, but that may be a wrong assumption. I guess this is to add shimmer wherever. I apologize if I got that wrong. But these are specifically labeled I. So we know what they're used for. There we go. These seem to be have a small little like grid, very minute grid pattern on them. Pretty easy to leave a mark. This is not as easily wiped off. It's staying around and embedding itself into my skin. This is exactly what it should be doing. So, we have a kind of bluish gray, dark bluish gray, kind of like a almost gunmetal color. We have almost pure white. It seems to be a little bit of yellow in there. It's a little warm white, kind of like a dove color. We have kind of a true neutral gray, about 50%, maybe a little less. Maybe it's about a 40% gray. And then this is just a light lilac bluish purple color. They work very well together. So these here... Open this up so you can see. We have kind of an emerald green, a periwinkle blue. It's a little, little purple, but not much. Then we have much more of a kind of a light cyan blue. And then we have a kind of eggshell white here. Each of these has a shimmer to it, um, a little iridescence.
This one is warmer in its palette. We have a kind of a light rose color matching up with the pencil. This is kind of a darker rose color, a little lighter than this pencil here. So we have some um, analogous colors to some of the other things we've seen. This is like a very light, light purple, white, kind of really a really cool white. And then this is just a kind of bronze, brownish gold color with some iridescence in it. Snap that back together. And then this one is interesting. I can get it open. There we go. These two are identical. I don't see much difference between them at all. My brain wants to tell me this is a shade lighter, but I don't. I think that's just a trick of the light. Those are the same color. This is a kind of a true neutral gray, kind of a 50%. And then this has got just a hint of red in it, just a little dusty rose, but mostly white. Maybe about a 10% gray there. So the color palette seemed to be fairly complementary. I think you could actually do some things with those. This is kind of a greenish blue, kind of a goldy red purpley, and then gray-blue together. So I think it gives you some different options for some different looks. You can play around with quite a few combinations of those and I think be pretty happy with it. Okay, so now we're back to lips. This is lip gloss. There are two tubes of this. And I do not know the difference between a lipstick and a lip gloss other than the consistency of the product. This is obviously much more of like a clay um, that you smear on and it leaves behind a little, it's thicker. This seems to be much more liquidy. And it has the same beveled application as the lipstick. It, it just takes a very light squeeze and that is starting to come out. So I'm going to close that back up. Again, we have a shimmer. I don't know if that is like a current trend, having shimmer in everything. I don't remember growing up seeing a whole lot of shimmer in things. It seemed to be much more just flat colors. So I, I think shimmer in this iridescence is a trend of the last few years. It is greasy, but it seems to be working into the skin fairly well, kind of like a lotion. So now my fingers are blushing. It doesn't roll up, so it is much more like a grease or a fat that is hydrating the skin. Instead of like a lipstick, which I assume just kind of sits on the surface and doesn't really soak in very much. So you can tell that dark gray, um, eyeshadow is still hanging around. Now it's gotten under my fingernail. Oh well. I probably should have trimmed my fingernail before I shot the video. So again we're sticking with this darker rose blush color. And then this is kind of similar to this as far as a pinkish brighter color. Now my fingers are slippery. And then down here we have some brushes for application. They seem to be very small, almost child size 
infant size, really. I mean, these are really small. But I guess that's all you really need. I don't see a lot of people, when they put on makeup, use these types of brushes. Usually they use longer ones, some of them quite long. I assume that it's because it gives you more control. This, you're pretty much just using your fingers as the fulcrum or your whole hand. Um, you're not really engaging everything you can when you have like a full paintbrush where you can lay it across and really start to get some wrist action in there and some subtle movements. So I would assume that if you were really going to be into makeup, you would want to supplement this brush set. These are just a piece of foam that's been pinched with a piece of metal on either side. Um, yeah, it seems like this piece of metal continues up inside of this. So this foam is not sticking out through the metal. It is capping over top of it. So that does give you some stiff resistance to it. But um, it's pretty sharp. I don't, that doesn't feel necessarily comfortable on my face or my, my, my finger. And so it would not feel comfortable on my face. So, from my opinion, those are very much beginner starting emergency. I don't have anything else, but I need to apply some makeup brushes. They're very small and compact, but I assume they're lacking in functionality and actual usefulness. Especially since some of the things I see some ASMR makeup people using are really big fluffy brushes with lots of um, hairs on them and really look like they would just caress your face very beautifully. Okay, so now we've moved on to this one. We have bronzer, which I know goes on your face, like on your cheeks, to make yourself look like you've got um, a suntan, maybe. It helps counteract some paleness. As you can see, these brushes look ridiculously small to actually being able to cover a large portion of your face. But this is kind of just a neutral brown. It's not, doesn't have any, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a rose color. It's much more just a brown, tan, khaki color. So, if that's your skin tone, you're in luck. But if not, I think it would look, you would have to put it all over. But I may not understand how it works. Maybe it's just a hint. Just enough to give a little bit of a darker shade like you've been kissed by the sun. Not a full suntan, but I could be misunderstanding. Okay. And this says mirror box. And as I open it up, I see it has a mirror. It is a box. And it looks like it is made, it has some compartments in here. So let me set that up there and we'll move on to these three blushers here. Pull them out. And then we can get rid of this plasticky thing, which is making me nervous that it's going to make a huge squeaking sound and sound terrible. Okay. So here we have three shades of pink, very close to each other in color. This is variations on a theme. These two seem to be nearly identical. This one is just a touch lighter. In color. 
but these are verging on bubblegum pink, kind of a cooler pink. And this is a little bit of a warmer pink color, probably much closer to a blush and much more in the family of this lip gloss. So we have some warmer reds here, and we have these very much more aggressive, cooler reds and pinks here. But it looks like this was made to hold this. Rotate that around so that fits in there like that. And then I assume that goes in like that, and you have a box which you can transport your blusher with you wherever you go. So this is the only thing that seems to be transportable other than like a lipstick or a lip gloss. But let me see. I think you can also put in one second. Could you put in the eyeshadow box as well? Yes. Okay. So you can also do that. So it's modular. I can appreciate modular. I like that. So we have a little case to keep with you. And we also have this mirror, I guess, to set up on your dresser. Although you would think you would have a larger mirror with you. So, two mirrors. I guess that's not a bad thing. We'll put that in there and move that off to the side. So now we have the final little tray. And this is to involve your toenails and your fingernails. So like I said, we have these black rubber things. I've seen them used to separate toes. I'm trying to think if my wife has ever used these. She is not a big makeup person, so that's why most of my experience with makeup has come through watching people on YouTube and ASMR videos. So, but those are to separate your toes. And then this is to file down your nails themselves, like the edges of them, and make them smooth. The grit seems to be the same on both sides. I don't know if there's a standard grit that all nail files have, or if there's like super rough and then medium and then really fine grit to get a high gloss. I'd imagine that would be a thing. These are wooden sticks. They are two of them taped together here. And they have two different ends. And I believe these are to push back the skin that grows up over your fingernails, your cuticle, or maybe to get underneath and clean out dirt. I'm not sure. I would imagine it's either one of those two things, or both. And this... I don't know. Well, it is not a brush. I thought these were, um, this was a brush, but it's a rubber tip. And it has a similar bevel to it. Well, not a similar bevel, but it has a bevel to it, like the sticks. I don't know if it is used more gently push back things. And then we have a beveled cut on the bias here at this tip. I do not know what this is for. I assume it is to do something with nails. Maybe these are for your hands and these are for your feet or vice versa. I don't know. If you do, let me know. And then we have a familiar set of colors. Let me pull these out here. There we go. So let's get rid of this tray as well. So we have a darker burgundy, which kind of matches up with this. 
and that a little bit. We have a brighter pink, which tends to match up with this. And maybe that a little bit. And then we have kind of a murky gold color. Honestly, it's kind of just a brown shimmer. But I guess maybe once it goes on, it is good. The cap has a stick with a brush on the end. Yep, it has a very strong alcohol nail polish smell to it. You would definitely know you were putting that on if you were doing it in a room. So, here we have all of the components that I'm going to try to use. Maybe not all of them, but some of the components I'm going to try to use to do a makeup video very soon. In the next few days, for sure. So let's move these down. Arrange everything very beautifully. So, from my non expert opinion, bordering on novice, so let's just go ahead and say, from my novice opinion, this seems to be like a nice little kit that would get someone started in their makeup career. It was not super expensive, so you could use it, mess up, take it off. You're not blowing through a ton of money. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to be like kitty versions of everything that is just pretending to be makeup, but isn't. It seems like it's actually makeup. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this um, unboxing of things I am not only vaguely familiar with. So, we will see how it works when I do your makeup in just a few days. So, if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe. And if you've liked this, please hit the like button. And feel free to educate me on anything that I'm ignorant about. I'm sure that alone will fill up the comment section. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.